Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some more dots. Two videos ago, we actually created a damaging system so that projectiles could hit the player, they get destroyed, they deal damage to the player, and then it goes through a buffer reducing that damage from the player's health. And then if the player dies, then they you know get destroyed. In the last video, we added blocking into the mix so that if a character has block, then that actually takes damage first before the damage resolve system gets, you know, to actually process the damage. And that's completely modular, so we can take out the block and everything still works just fine. And then today we're going to add something else into the mix like block. We're going to be adding damage resistances based on type. So for example, um, when the projectile hits, it's going to deal 10 fire damage. The player can have fire resistance, which will reduce the damage they take from fire. Or equally, they could take more damage from fire. It's up to you, right? So I'm going to be showing you how to make that in today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into it. Okay, so this video is going to be split up into three parts. Part one will be storing the damage type data and resistance stats for the player. That'll all be done using scriptable objects. Then we'll be dragging those scriptable objects into authoring components. Then when we convert them, it's actually going to be grabbing the data from the scriptable object and converting it into ECS data on components. So we have that clear separation between, you know, designing in the inspector in the old way and just pure data representation in dots, the really performant way. And then for step two, we'll be creating the actual components as well as modifying older ones. So for example, the deal damage component will now store the damage type it's dealing as an ID integer. Then finally for step three, we'll be creating the damage resistance system that'll work very similarly to the block system, but instead of reducing the damage by actually subtracting the damage from it, we're actually just gonna be using multiplication. So for example, if you have, you know, 200% resistance, it means that you're gonna take half the damage you normally would, whereas 100% would actually mean you're gonna take normal damage. That allows you to easily go above 100 for gaining resistance and below 100 for, you know, being weak and taking more damage. So if you've got 50% fire, it actually means you're gonna take double the damage that you normally would at 100%. Let's get into it. So the first thing to do is to create a scriptable object damage type. It's gonna store the ID of the damage type and that's how we're actually gonna compare when we deal damage to say, you know, is this thing dealing damage the same as this resistance? We just compare on IDs, so we don't need any other reference data. Then the name is unused at the moment, but I just thought we'd add name anyway, so that when we have the scriptable object, we can see what it is. And then color as well is unused at the moment, but I plan on using it in a video where we're gonna, we're gonna have text appear when you deal damage, you know, just saying how much damage you dealt, and the font color of that text is gonna be the color of this. So we're actually gonna be reading it at some point. I just added it for now, you don't have to if you don't want to. And that's gonna be our scriptable object for a damage type. So then the other scriptable object is the damage resistance stats object, and this is what's gonna actually store resistances for a particular entity. So for example, the player or a particular kind of enemy. So in a lot of games, you'll have you know enemies, maybe a goblin, and that goblin has certain resistances. And then all the goblins have the same resistance, or maybe all of that type of goblin have the same resistances. So you could on a prefab set up the resistances, but I feel like it actually makes sense to do it on a scriptable object. Because for example, if you have uh, some UI somewhere like a Pokedex in Pokemon where you can see data about a particular enemy or you know Pokemon or whatever, then that data is a lot easier to read from a scriptable object than from a game object prefab. It makes more sense to read it from a scriptable object as well, rather than from some prefab somewhere. So this allows us to easily store the data. We're gonna have an array of resistances or resistance and resistance is just in here. It's a simple way to store a damage type and a value to go with that damage type. So the value of one means you're gonna take normal damage. So if you have 10 fire damage coming in and you've got a value of one for fire, then you're gonna just take the 10 damage. But if you've got a value of two, we're gonna then do one over two and one divided by two is actually 0 0.5, meaning you're gonna take half the damage then if you have a value of 0 0.5, we're gonna do one over that, which is two, meaning you can take double damage. So this is your resistance value, okay? Um, and we can set that up in the inspector. I'm just gonna set the default value to one, which makes sense, you know, if you have an added resistance, you're gonna take normal damage by default, and then you can tweak that to take more or less. So for step two, we're gonna be working on our components. We're gonna to go to the damage buffer element data we created last time, or actually in episode one for the buffer. We're gonna add one more field, which is for the damage type ID. And that damage type ID is gonna be set when grabbing it from the damage type over here. We're gonna do that in the authoring component. So over in our deal damage authoring, we're gonna add the ID as a field as well. And then down here, when we set the uh, value in the authoring component, we're also gonna set the damage type Okay, so we drag in the reference to the scriptable object. But then as you see here, when we actually convert, we get rid of the scriptable object effectively and we just grab the ID off it. Now, yeah, we could just set this to be an integer ID here, right, for the damage type, but that wouldn't really 
be very good for us because we might just type an ID wrong and we might forget, you know, what ID refers to what object. So if we just drag in the actual damage type and then grab its ID, it makes a lot more sense and a lot easier to work with, okay? And then finally, we're going to create a new type of buffer, which is the damage resistance buffer, which is going to store the int for the damage type ID for the resistance, and then the value of the actual resistance, which might be 1 or 0.5 or 2 or something along those lines. And I'm going to set the buffer capacity to be 2 for now. Now, this value is basically about how much memory it's going to reserve when you create something with this buffer. Um, if you actually go over the capacity of the buffer, it's okay, it still works, it doesn't break your game, but it's not ideal because it actually puts it onto the heap instead. So what you actually want to do is you want to make sure this number is not so small that you always go over it, but not too big that you're wasting the memory. Now, it's all about tweaking the value until you get it just right. Now in my game, here I only have two types of damage for this example, like two different types, fire and water, so I'm just going to set it to be two because it can't be higher than two. But if you had more damage types, then I'd recommend for this example to just set it to be whatever that like type is. Now, maybe certain enemies, you know, never have more than, say, five different types of resistances. So just set it to five, you know, it's whatever works best for you. It's up to you to tweak this value. But for me right now, two is the best. And then the authoring component takes in a reference to the scriptable object of the damage resistance stats. OK, and then from there, it adds the buffer to the entity and loops over each resistance and then adds a new damage resistance component which is the thing up here and we set the damage type to be resistance in the loop dot damage type dot id and the value to be resistance dot value which it grabs obviously as said from resistances here the damage type and value okay and this now gives us a buffer with our stats on it so with this uh sorry this here basically converts from this scriptable object into ecs okay let's go give it a go in the inspector so before we check in the inspector, you need to compile and you'll have a problem here with the um, interpreting the dynamic buffer. So last time we had something here like um, var, let's just call it a for now, damage buffer dot interpret. OK, uh, let me just see. It's not coming up in IntelliSense, but it's uh, oh sorry, reinterpret. That'll be why dot reinterpret. And what that basically does is it goes to our dy dynamic buffer and tries to treat it as, let's say, I don't know, an integer. And that only works if we have only an integer in there, or technically it works if you have another data type of the same size, but it doesn't really work with what we need to do. And especially now that our damage uh, component stores two values, it doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to do it this way. I've changed it to be a loop backwards. Okay, so we're gonna loop backwards over the buffer. And that's because when we remove and add components, I don't want it to mess up the order of the um, the buffer. Now, there might be another way to go about doing this, but this is the way I find that works for me. So we're gonna loop from the end to the start and still calculate the damage to block like normal, still reduce it from the block component. But then here with the damage buffer, because we can't just directly change a certain value on the damage buffer, it doesn't let you, it's read only. We have to actually remove the old instance of the, the buffer element and add a new one in. So I'm saying here, okay, let's add at i, so we're looping with i being the index. At that index, we're gonna add a new one instead to replace the old one basically. Uh, and we're setting the damage ID to be the damage buffer i dot type ID. We've got it from over here. Then the actual value of the um, damage now is the value of the damage before minus the damage to block because obviously we're just subtracting the block amount um, and then what we do is once we've actually added that new one in with the updated value we then remove at i plus one and the reason we do i plus one is when we insert this at i the thing that was at i gets pushed one back so it's now at i plus one we want to remove that value okay and this all works smoothly because we're looping down the list so we don't mess up any orders and then this is the same as last time and so on and then once you've done this if we now go back over to unity we're going to go to i've made a folder called game data i've made a damage type so right click create damage type uh, i've made a fire damage type with an id of zero called it fire made it red and then water gave an id of one called it water made it blue okay so at least two different instances of the scriptable object and then here I've got a scriptable object for the stats for our player. It has two different types of resistances. It's got the fire type where it takes 0.5. Well, no, sorry, not takes 0.5, it has 0.5. So that means that I actually take more fire damage. I take double fire damage. And then over here, I actually take um, half water damage. Now you could actually flip that around and do the math differently. So this would say two and this would say 0.5. But the point is, yeah, I have more water resistance and less fire resistance. Okay, so whatever the fire thing says it's gonna deal, it's actually gonna deal more. Whatever the water thing says it's gonna deal, it's actually gonna deal less to me, okay? 
the fi final thing to do is actually create the system for uh, reducing the damage based on resistances and then we can go test it with these two projectiles there's actually another one in the scene view right above us okay let's go create the system okay so the damage resistance system needs to update before the block system at least in the way i've designed it i want it to happen before blocking so i want damages to be reduced then they go off your shield i think it makes more sense that way you don't want you know damage to be reduced by the shield and then reduced by you know the type and then hit your health it make it makes more sense to go this way around this is how games usually do it and it doesn't make the most sense job component system like normal and in the update we want to loop through entities right we're going to do a for each loop we want everything that has a damage buffer and we want this to be uh, ref because we're going to be changing stuff on there then we want an in in is the instead of ref ref means reference and it's going to be read and write whereas in means read only okay we're not going to be changing any resistances we're just reading the resistances okay um and here they are res the damage resistance dynamic buffer okay now the player has a dynamic buffer of damage resistance and damage so this is going to work on the player right now only but then eventually uh, obviously if you have enemies and stuff they're also going to have this and we're going to say well let's loop over every bit of damage you're going to take okay and then for each bit of damage we're also going to loop over all resistances that exist on you now uh, once we've got into that loop, we can then say, well, if this bit of damage we're checking, if the damage type that it's going to be is the same as this resistance, it means you have a resistance for this type of damage. Let's figure out how to modify it, okay? So how do we modify it? Well, we're going to do like we did earlier. We insert an I a new damage, okay? The damage ID is from there. And then the value is I'm casting it to an int just because we um, are using integers for damage and health. If you're using floats, then you don't need to do that. And I'm saying, okay, we're gonna take the current value of the damage and multiply it by one over the resistance. So as I said, it's like, uh, if you have a resistance of two, then I'm gonna do one over two. One over two is 0.5. If I times it by 0.5, it actually halves the damage amount. So I'm gonna, you know, halve the damage that it's gonna deal. And then once I've done that, I then remove the other element that was there. So now I'm left with the modified damages, okay? And then I break because I know there won't be any other resistances for the same type because otherwise you know it would just be the same type it doesn't make sense and then obviously we then do all the loops for all the damages and we run and return default and this is it to be honest that's that's it that's all we had to really do to handle calculating damage resistances well, let's go give it a test so to give it a test we go over to the player we go down to their uh, damage resistance offering which if you haven't added it you now need to add to the new thing we made today and then drag in the reference to the scriptable object for the resistance stats here we go okay and then over here on the projectiles, you'll notice we now have a field next to the damage for the damage type. So I've set this blue one to be water and this red one to be fire, okay? They both deal 50 damage, okay? Remember, they both deal 50 damage. Let's give it a go. Now, the player, if we go check, has, let's see, um, game. They have apparently 100 health. Uh, I'm pretty sure they had more than 100 health. Let me actually just go check that, sorry. So the player, ah, yep, yeah, the block here should be, let's say 25, okay? Apparently I changed the value at some point. Um, so if we press play, we go back to the player. The player has 25 block and 100 health. So this first projectile, okay, let's think, it has 50 damage, but the player has like two times the resistance on frost or water or whatever. That means they're gonna take half the damage. So this 50 damage projectile is actually gonna deal 25 damage, okay? Even though it says it's gonna deal 50, it's gonna deal 25 to me. Okay, so the, the block should go away and the health should be on 100. That is the expected uh, result here. And that's what happened. The block got removed and the health is still on 100. And next we have this fire projectile. Now the, play, the, the player takes double fire damage because they have a 0.5 resistance of it, right? Uh, if I go to damage resistances, the player has 0.5 for fire, meaning this projectile here is actually gonna deal, instead of 50 damage, it's gonna deal, uh, oops, what is happening here? Let me open up the player entity. Uh, go back to entities player. Okay, this player, even though the projectile is going to deal 50, it's actually going to deal 100 to me. Let's see if it works and it kills the player. Brought them down to zero. They've now got the dead tag, and in the next frame they die. Okay, that works. Now you know you can do whatever you want. You can easily go now and make a new damage type. So we're going to make damage type say damage type underscore um, I don't know earth. So maybe earth damage type, and let's say earth is some kind of brownie color okay it doesn't really matter too much and then it will call it uh, earth to make sure to set the id to something unique okay so we've got 
uh, 0, 1, and 2 now. And if I go over to the player, I'm going to say, all right, let's add to this list a new element, so element 3, and it's going to be for Earth. Okay, so I'll drag this into the Earth. And you're going to take, um, you know, oh, if you set it to 0, it breaks, though, because you do 1 over 0, you can't divide by 0, you get a division error. So I should probably add a catch in for that. But let's just say a really small number, like 0 0.1. Now, I mean, I can't be bored figuring out uh, what value this is. I mean, if you actually just do... Uh, 1 over 0 0.1 actually it's crazy it's just 10 so I'm gonna take 10 times the damage with this right um, if I'm gonna take 10 times the damage let's go and go to our projectile the first one the blue one I'm saying even though it's blue it doesn't really matter I'm gonna say you're gonna deal earth damage you're gonna deal 50 earth damage now obviously because I take 10 times the damage from earth it's actually gonna deal 500 to me so the player's is gonna die from this one projectile okay you ready to see if it works and it hits and they die so there we go. You can now tweak damage resistances to make things deal different damage to you know whatever it's hitting. So okay, so that's it for this video. If you guys like the video, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It'd help a lot. Share it with friends, family on the internet, wherever you can. It'd really help. And if you want access to the source code to this video, it's over on my GitHub page. Link is down below. It's something like Dots Damage Systems or something like that. Okay, same name as my project here, Dots Damage Systems. Uh, feel free to let me know down below what you want to see next in the Dots or in Normal Unity or whatever. Just let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I end, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Jason Swearingen, Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Heidi Zorko, Rene, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. It would help me out greatly if you could follow on any of those. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.